uh, time now to take a look at the big stories in the headlines. Giles Brandreth and Deborah Meaden are here. Morning. Welcome to you both. How are you both? Good. Look, good for you. Oh, I got, got you a. I got you a birthday balloon, but it went wrong in two ways. <laughs> First of all, I got it sent to the wrong address. It came to me instead of you. And then, because I wasn't in, I was taking my walk, the postman tried to put it through the letterbox. <laughs> so it's supposed to be a lovely floaty balloon, all uh, addressed to you. Oh, and in fact, it's you, a rather Giles. sad thing. Anyway, thank you so, so much, Giles. Well, it's a lovely Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> it's deflated balloon. Thank so you so much. So now I feel really bad. Happy birthday, Alison. Yeah, what did you get me, Deborah? <laughs> I baked you a cake, but I, 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 I'll eat it later. I'll let you know how it went. Don't worry, Deborah. It's not a competition. Thank you, my darling. That's so lovely. Well, let's kick off with the very first stories. Um, the R rate hits the lowest level in 10 months, apparently. The R rate is at its lowest point since April, according to new modelling, which is, suggests coronavirus vaccines are beginning to take effect. So, Giles, does this drop in the R rate actually mean that lockdown and the vaccination programme is actually working now? It does seem to be. We've so got used to being negative about everything, we can hardly believe the positive news. But when I went for my walk this morning, I saw snowdrops, I saw even some budding daffodils. I thought spring is in the air. Yeah. There's the possibility, really, of having a summer. We may even be able to go on holiday. The vaccination programme is working. More than 10 million people, including me, have had the jab. The future could be almost normal. Uh, Deborah, when do you think uh, when do you think we should, and when do you think we will uh, get out of lockdown? Well, I hope it's not too early because this is really, really good news. But we've been here before, you know. We've got really close to it. We've come out of lockdown. We've thought, okay, life's back to normal. But I just feel like we are so close. This is such good news. There are such good signs that I think we really need to hang on in there until we're absolutely on top of it. I'd like to think that we're looking at a reasonably normal summer. You know, maybe a little bit of loosening towards, the, you know, towards April, May, um, but not too much, just, just so we can we can definitely beat this thing. And then, and as I say, hopefully we'll be able to enjoy some, some time together in the summer. Speaking of which, Alison. Speaking of which, apparently there is a, a, a new vaccine passport being thrown around a little bit. Um, apparently, um, Greece is reporting uh, thinking about using a vaccine passport. What do you actually think about that, Deborah? I, I think it's a brilliant idea. I mean, actually, Sweden are talking about having electronic vaccine passports. And actually, you kind of think, why don't we do that anyway? Because a bit of carrying around a bit of paper, there can be a lack of confidence in that. But, you know, as soon as you have a vaccine, if you're registered instantly, electronically, and then you then you can move freely across the countries, you know, it, it also needs to be a worldwide thing. There's no point us having a bit of paper if they're not going to accept it in Sweden or Hungary or Africa. Um, so it kind of needs to be a worldwide thing and why not make it electronic why are we producing more bits of paper yeah this oh, this also is where the olds get their revenge because uh they'll have had their vaccine charles you'll be loving this because you get your vaccination <laughs> early which means the young yes. won't be able to travel and you can have kind of like, lovely kind of beach access almost <laughs> on your own by the looks of it <laughs> Speech to myself, isn't that brilliant? But in fact, Alison, they're not just throwing the idea around. There's work, I understand, taking place at the Foreign Office, the Department of Transport and the Department of Health working on a vaccine passport for all. And in the long term, this globally has to be the answer because the idea of these quarantine hotels and being locked away for 10 days after every trip, that isn't a long-term solution, but the vaccine passport is. We've all got used to having a passport. Let's have a vaccine passport. Then we'll be free to go everywhere and anywhere when sensibly we've had both our jabs. It is a serious question, though, because presumably this, this, the jab will have to happen once a year, which then means that not everyone will be able to get it, which then means there'll be a certain uh, a proportion of society under the age of, under, let's say, 60, who might not get, or under 50, who might not get the jab. So, that, so you can't curtail their right to travel as well, I suppose, can you? No, I think in the long term, we... Sorry, yeah, after you, Deborah. So, thank you. I, I, I guess the, the point is that if you have the vaccine, if you actually have an electronic um, vaccine, on your, maybe on your passport, 
it's up to the countries to apply it. So there might be times when actually everybody's feeling very relaxed about things. And, and this happens all the time at the moment. Some countries have yellow fever, then they don't have yellow fever. So actually you can switch it on, you can switch it off. And therefore you can make it very safe when we're at high risk. And you can actually say, do you know, it doesn't matter. We don't require that now because actually COVID isn't around. Yeah, okay. absolutely amazing. Well, I, I already do, I've done a vaccine from when I went to Brazil. I had to do a, a vaccine anyway, so it's the same sort of thing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You, you know, fever and typhoid and stuff. But listen, forget Netflix. We found another form of entertainment. Let's take a look at the parish council meetings on Zoom that is going on right now. It's gone viral. Take a look at this. If you disrupt this meeting, I will have to remove you from it. You can't. Oh, it's only the chairman who can remove people from a meeting. You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. No authority at all. She's just kicked him out. I, I, no, no, she's kicked him out. Don't, don't. She's kicked him out. Don't. This is a meeting called by two councillors. Illegally. They now elect a chairman. No, they can't because the vice chair's here. I take charge. Uh, Read the standing orders. Read them and understand them. <laughs> Charles, Charles, oh my God. This must make the House of Commons look like a tea party. I mean, this is a blood sport going on out there. <laughs> it's fabulous. And I believe there is already a, t a television company working on a series to be called No Authority Jackie Weaver. Um, <laughs> she's going to become a cult figure. The Ina Sharples of our day. Read the standing orders. It's fabulous. But it's a reminder of what local politics can really be about. Amazing. Yeah. Deborah, this is like the um, Vicar of Dibley on steroids, isn't it? I mean, what do you make of it? <laughs> Well, I think it shows how Zoom has actually switched the balance of power because whoever holds that button now feels that they are now in control of whatever meeting they're in. You know, the button that says you can speak and you can speak. So I, I've, I've got, you know, there's a whole new balance of power going on here. I think maybe, maybe local authorities need to do a little bit of training on Zoom. And uh, no, I, I, it was, it was, ex I'd like to think it was extraordinary anyway. I hope it's not what goes on all of the time in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gone finally, viral. Yorkshire puddings have been voted Britain's favourite regional speciality. Giles, are we a Yorkshire pudding fan? I am. I have been. My family come from Yorkshire uh, in the 1700s. That's when the Yorkshire pudding really got going. Originally, you know, it was served as a first course with gravy to take away your appetite. So you would feed up on the Yorkshire pudding uh, to, you know, when, when food was scarce, so as not to look forward to anything. And poor families just ate the Yorkshire pudding with a bit of gravy, never mind the meat. But now it's become a centrepiece of a Sunday lunch. And this Sunday, of course, is National Yorkshire Pudding Day. So I love a Yorkshire pudding. I love food history. Oh, me too. Who knew? Who knew? And Deborah, do you put the gravy in your Yorkshire pudding? Oh, absolutely. And that's all you need. Yorkshire pudding and gravy. But I have to put, I've got to put a word in for Somerset cream teas. I'm a Somerset girl. And I know, yeah, I, I noticed that Devon cream teas were on the, on the, in the competition. <laughs> The, 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 vice chair, yeah, the vice chair's here. You can't change the subject. There's <laughs> <laughs> my button. There's my button. <laughs> Remove him. him. Mute him. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, oh, thank you so much, Giles. <laughs> <laughs> and Deborah. Thank oh, you so oh. much, guys. You're oh, hilarious. Lovely. Cheers, guys. Thank you.